I remember very early memories, like being sat in a, being on a car on, on a motorway, and there was a, there was a man like praying on the, on the hard shoulder, you know, by the side of the road. I asked my dad, I said, what's, what's he doing? And he explained to me that, yeah, this is a Muslim, and they pray like this. And I, rem I remember to this day that I had a very, like, impact. It had a, quite a profound impact on me. I thought, wow, that's really, you know, something good. But the religion was me, for me, was just that, you know, I had to wake up on a Sunday morning, no matter how late I'd gone to bed the night before. And it was just, you know, it was, uh, it was like I have to go for an hour every Sunday morning to make my parents happy. So by the stage, I'd got to, I wouldn't say I didn't believe in a God, or I did believe in a God. I just wasn't really thinking about it. I just wasn't really interested. In the, whole, in the whole question or anything. Um, so that's, that was me up until I first sort of started to hear about Islam. I think when you look at Islam and you look at Christianity, there's many of the morals and values that are shared between the two religions. Obviously there's difference when it comes down to fundamental beliefs on Tawheed, um, when it comes to the detail and depth of the Sharia, there's differences there. But on a lot of the general over, overall principles and morals, there's a lot of similarity. So Alhamdulillah, I had the benefit of being able to grow up in a family um, who are practicing and believing uh, Catholics. We're just going to do a conversation, yeah? We're just going to be talking a little bit. Like, you know like how we used to do it, just purely in Arabic, okay? Um, just to go over some of the things we've done. Fi ala min illa. Fi ala min illa. I'm in Streatham in South London to meet with Christopher Mortimer, a British Muslim convert. He converted to Islam in 2003, at just 19 years of age. Christopher is one of the 100,000 Britons who have converted to Islam in the last 10 years. He first found out about Islam through his Muslim friends at school. Discussing Islam with these friends led to him questioning many aspects of his Christian faith. Um, I think eventually what happened is um, as I started to get more Muslim friends, I had particularly very close, like very close friends who are Muslim. Um, and so I spent a lot of time in their house, in, 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 my, in one particular friend's house, and I got to know his family very closely. Um, and I got to see how they practiced, you know, without sort of like preaching. I mean, we did speak about religion, you know, backward. I think he was probably like, he was probably looking at the question of religion himself because you know he was questioning his own religion and at the same time I was getting interested so we were kind of like on a path together looking at this and I think one thing which was very good so we, we were discussing religion openly but the other thing was I just got to see how the family interacted and how it worked in practice and I got to see you know during Ramadan when everyone was fasting iftar time I got to see you know a lot of different things which I just saw in practice rather than sort of preaching I just got to see it how it works and so that was probably the biggest influence um, that kind kind of sparked me to wanting to look into this, you know, it made me really want to start looking and say, you know, what is this all about? Um, and so when I started to look at it, this when I started to read on the internet and this when I started to get some books, I started to go to lectures and I was looking for like six years um, on and off, you know, um, I was looking at into Islam and saying, you know, and having many arguments with people and debates and saying, you know, this doesn't make sense to me, I don't agree with this, why do you have like this? And this went on for a long, long time, you know. Um, until I think eventually what happened is I actually did start to realise that there's a great logic in everything, you know, in, the, in not just the beliefs, not just the belief system, but actually in the practice. Um, I took my shahada when I was 19. Um, I it was, it was different, I mean, it was quite funny the way it happened because I'd been researching from Islam for like six years up until that point, and then finally in one lecture it just clicked into, into place. Um, so I was listening to this sheikh giving a lecture, and it was all about the topic was uh, jihad and nafs. I remember very clearly. And he was talking about you know the 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 battle between you know the the higher purpose and the kind of lower desires and in some detail. And it was at that moment I remember just sat there and I thought you know I think I I, I suddenly realised and I thought to myself you know I know I I already know within myself that this is the truth. I've realised for, for for many reasons that, that Islam is the truth. What other system can tell you this kind of truth, you know? Um, I felt like that, you know, this, this information was talking to me personally, and yet this is teachings from the Quran and from the Prophet so long ago, you know? And it was at this time I said, you know, there's, this is better than the system, than, than, than my belief in my system at the moment. I don't know any other better system, so I have to take that decision. And it was at that point where I said, you know what, I'm going to go at the end of this lecture and I'm going to take that step and actually make my shahada. And then at the end of that lecture, that's when I took up, stood up and I said to the sheikh, I'd take my shahada and we stood up and did the whole thing and that's, that's, that was the, the, the moment. My mother, when I told her, became very upset because uh, she thought, you know, like she'd lost her son, you know, she, she didn't know what was going to happen, was I going to become some kind of 
you know, crazy person. She was very scared, you know. Um, so she, you know, there was a lot of my mother crying and upset and all this kind of thing. My father was, he knew a bit about Islam, he wanted to discuss, so we spoke about it. He, when it all calmed down, it became a lot easier, so we were able to discuss more. And then probably what happened from there is for about a year, we just didn't really talk about religion at all. So, but then after a time, it became easier, like, you know, time, they say time is a healer, you know, it became, uh, it became easier on them. Uh, we started to discuss more, I spoke with my father more and I think probably they became happier that actually after like a year, after a year and a half, actually they hadn't seen some kind of, I wasn't all of a sudden coming home and you know in some, I hadn't become strange, you know, I hadn't become crazy or anything like that. And the other thing is that my lifestyle changed, so whereas they were, might be used to me going out at night, coming back maybe next day or coming back very late at night and you know, um, sometimes coming back really drunk or they were worried where I'd been, what I'd been up to, getting in trouble and all this kind of thing. But now all of a sudden I was, uh, you know, they, 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 I think there was less worry on them because they knew that, you know, what I was doing, I was going out, the, pe the places I was going were safe, you know. The, the things I was getting up to, I was going to friends' houses or if I was at home, I would be, you know, I'd be getting home earlier at night. You know, they didn't have to worry about that I was drunk. Or, and it, it, it was, became a lot easier for them. After a while, actually, our relationship became a lot stronger than it probably was before. But this took some time, you know, this is talking about a couple of years later. First time I met him, I was actually doing some filming for Ahla Bay TV. And I think I'd given him a lift. So we spoke maybe for like 10 minutes there and 10 minutes back in the car. Um, I had mentioned to so we have a mutual friend who's a convert, um, who's a lot older than both of us, um, that I'd like Chris. I was at the gym one morning and uh, I got a call from a friend. He said, are you looking to get married? And I said, possibly, you know, I'm not, I'm not actively looking, but I'm not, not looking, you know. So he said, um, he said, I know someone who I think would be a really good match. So I knew who she was, but we didn't know each other, but I just knew, I had a brief conversation with who she was. I think two months later I got an email from Chris saying, just one line, uh, my intentions are pure, can we meet for coffee? Um, which I liked, because it was to the point, it was, you know, pure intentions. And um, I asked my parents, and surprisingly, surprisingly, they said, yeah, that's okay. And that's it, and then we met, obviously the first time we met, we met um, just in a coffee shop, the two of us. So we met up and then I came on the same day and I met her parents and we got to, we really got on well, very, you know, just very conversational, I really got on well with Sophia and both and her parents. Um, and then, yeah, so she met my parents and, you know, the, about three weeks after our first meeting we got engaged and then about um, maybe two months after that, three, yeah, maybe two months after that we were married. He must have thought, OK, I'll take at least six months, you know, and even that's quick, perhaps, for his parents. And so for them, initially, like, we had to kind of... Because to tell them, oh, we've only known each other for a few weeks is, is would be quite worrying for them. Um, and that was what we were quite worried about. How long would we say we've known each other for? How well do we know each other for? They're very sweet, so... Um, and it's just got better and better and better as time has gone along, and um, I feel very much part of his family now and we have we, see, we have a very good relationship, see them, you know, at least like weekly basis normally and stuff, so it's good. After we got married I found out that we're both quite into sport and um, you know like he's got a good sense of humour and all of these things though, a lot of which I didn't know before we got married. So when we get or before we got engaged it was just he had good manners, he was you know well spoken and was into Islam and practicing. That was the, the main three things. And so what I found is that actually Islam just felt so natural. It was just like, I really felt like it was the most natural form of existence for me. Um, that actually, I mean, everything in life has changed. I would say I'm a lot more content, I'm a lot happier person. Obviously, my day, you know, just, this is the great thing about Islam, is it's such a practical way of life. So now, my timings of my day and everything all revolve around Salat, you know, for example, that, you know, getting up every morning now is taken for granted for Salat al Fajr, which is something which beforehand was just something which would never have occurred to me, you know. Um, the places I go to are completely different now, so whereas I used to, for socialising and things I'd enjoy doing, I'd love to go to a bar or to a nightclub or something like this, now, you know, I'd never go to those places, so, you know, if people from work are going there, it's just known, it's a known thing that I would never go, and so my entire social sphere is now revolves around the home, it revolves around my house, House, it revolves around friends' houses, so the whole social kind of thing, and restaurants and things like that. So the whole, my whole social life has changed 
Um, you know, my, my timings around Salat, my spirituality, I would say I really had very little spirituality before, but now you have the Salat to keep you there and it's a constant connection with Allah. And so I have this constant thing in my life that's like a spiritual, uh, spiritual element. So I travelled to um, Iran um, just a, a, sh a little while after, after becoming Muslim um, and I went there with a group of youth, so maybe there was a group of about 60 all from around the UK and we all travelled to Iran and the reason being is to try to you know, get, get, because we live in the UK, we live in a very like, not just un-Islamic society, but just a completely unreligious society. So it can be sometimes difficult to feel like a Muslim when you live here. Even if you believe in Islam, it's like, it's not around you all the time. And you, you live in a, you feel like kind of a foreigner. So the idea of these trips was to take people and you can go and you can spend some time in an Islamic country. You can study, um, you just get the experience of visiting. We go for Ziyarat of Mamruda alayhi salam. And there's a big group of people together, so we get to study together and benefit from just the friendships and bonds that we formed there as well. Um, so I went to, to Iran with this group, um, and really it was excellent because it's the first time that I'd been to a, a Muslim country, um, and it's the first time I'd experienced, you know, um, uh, a, a system where where everyone around me, you know, was 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 um, was was, was practicing Muslim. So that was really. Um, it felt so different, you know, for once I didn't feel like an outsider, I didn't feel like uh, the odd one out, you know, that was, that was incredibly good. And I found Iranian people very welcoming, you know, especially when we, f we hear so many bad stories, you know, about Iranian people and you'd expect people to like, if you said you were British, like to really hate you or to want to, I don't know, do, do, do what to you. But every time we mentioned we met people there, we mentioned we were from the UK, people would always try to help us out and they would take us to places. I remember so many people gave us lifts in their cars to restaurants and people were so, people were very, very welcoming, very friendly. So I remember that to be a, a really positive experience as well. When I recite Quran, I feel like it rolls off the tongue. Like it sounds nice. Like even just to sit and recite Quran is just a very relaxing sensation. I mean, the Quran really deals with such a broad spectrum, you know, going from like your reason for being, the creation of, of mankind, you know, down to the practical laws, down to historical stories of the prophets. And there's so much wisdom contained, you know, um, that it's one of those books that sometimes if you read a book once, you know, you feel like you've read it, you wouldn't read it again. But the Quran, every single time you read it, it's like there's always something else to be gained. There's something, something like an ayah which you've read many times over. When you read it again, you just find out something different in it. Or you can read a different scholar's interpretation or a hadith about this ayah, and all of a sudden you gain something extra. Um, and it just seems like this ne never stops with the Quran, you know. For me, you know, um, if we believe that, that God has actually given us his, his book and an actual sort of code for life, a belief, you know, everything's in there that we need. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, the more I try to make this like, a, like an everyday part of my life to read the Quran. After I'd been Muslim for maybe around five years, um, and shortly after I got married, we, my, my wife and myself, we moved out to Syria for a year. Um, the main reason w was we wanted to study Arabic so we could understand some more of the Quran, some more of the works which has not been translated into English, um, just to get a better feeling for the du'a and all this kind of thing. So, so we studied out in Syria for a year. Um, we studied at the University of Damascus for a while and we also, um, alhamdulillah, had some help from some of the houses who let us sit in their classes and put on some special programs for us. In all in all, I mean, that year which I spent in Syria really changed, had a completely life-changing effect for me. It really um, had, had a massive influence um, on my understanding of Islam and my strength um, as a Muslim. 
فلتمشي بالمعنى هكذا وإذا تسائق السيارة هكذا أوكي okay. جيد The school is um, it's a madrasa we call it obviously you still use an Arabic word um, for the, for the young children to come on a Saturday so they come on a Saturday morning from around 10 o'clock in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then they study a range of, they try, try to study like a broad range. So they, they study Arabic, they study Quran, they study history, um, they study fiqh and akhlaq. So they just try to cover a very broad range of subjects. Um, and they go all the way up until getting like a GCSE Arabic or GC, you know, so there's a GCSE Islamic studies. So they go all the way up to getting some sort of recognized qualifications. And I mean, and I mean, and I mean, nobody. I teach, at the moment I'm teaching Arabic, just. Um, in the past I've taught fiqh and, uh, fiqh and akhlaq and also uh, history, but at the moment just Arabic, which is what I prefer to teach. Bil Arabi. When does this finish? La, Bil Arabi. No, we're not supposed to Huh? Yes, you are. He said... Ten minutes. I mean, obviously they can be like a big class of young boys. Um, towards you know on their Saturday morning, sometimes they don't want to come to. Uh, they can be quite naughty because obviously they'd rather be out playing. Uh, I don't blame them for that, so it can be quite difficult sometimes. But no, overall I definitely enjoy it, and they're nice. They're very nice kids. No, it's from two. two. Zayn, the film star, is the only one. Salam alaikum. Well, when I got married to Sophia, she was teaching, and beyond before that, I really had no knowledge that the madras even existed. So then when I found out about that, it just sounded like such a good idea, such a good thing, because, you know, as someone who became Muslim later in my life, I felt like I missed out on so much of this kind of thing, like, you know, all the basics of learning that. I thought, you know what, if there's a school doing this for the kids, it's really important that they have that. And secondly, for me, I saw it as an opportunity for myself to actually, because if I have to teach the things, I have to learn them. And so, um, whereas I'd maybe picked up some of the more advanced books and different things like that because of my age when I became Muslim, I'd missed out on all the sort of simple and basic. So it was a good chance for me, myself, to go back and learn all the things that I'd missed out on. And do you enjoy it? Uh, yes, I do enjoy it. Overall, yeah, I, I probably depends what week you ask um, and how lively the class has been. But yeah, alhamdulillah, I do, I do enjoy it. Yeah. You came in, you but it's up now, yeah, it's finished. Half an hour ago, huh? You came in half an hour ago, half an hour ago, surgery. Many people, when you first tell them, you know, when I first say I become Muslim, they think, wow, like, that's really dedicated, or, you know, there's this idea that why would you give up all of the freedom, you can do whatever you want, you know, you had a good life, why would you, why would you give that up to join a religion which is so strict and which stops you from doing everything, which is so harsh? Um, and I think especially many people who are born Muslim maybe feel this as well, like they say, you know, they, they sometimes may find it strange that a person, you know, would, would want to voluntarily give up all of their freedoms and, and become a Muslim, you know. Um, and so I think my answer to this is that really, like, since I've become Muslim, I feel like I've gained so much freedom. The reason being is that all of these kind of desires that you have, all of these things which you find, all these kind of like uh, quick fix kind of things that that are fun and that give you a lot of fun in the short term like going out, partying and drinking and having girlfriends and do all these kind of things that you can that you just have freedom to do you know whilst these things give you like a like a very quick buzz or short term fun in the long term they really just hold you back in the long term they 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 kind of lessen you, they kind of make you feel like less as a, as a person they, they make your, your your worth feel kind of lower but when you when you live life from my experience of, of living life as a, as a Muslim, is that all of these practices in Islam, the Salat, you know, um, the rules, are, the rules are around social etiquettes about who you can and who you shouldn't mix with, um, the rules about where you should and shouldn't go, all of these kind of things, even down to the personal hygiene and everything, I've just found that they're just so natural. They just seem to make, from somebody who, from someone I never had any of this in my life before, to taking this on and practicing as much as I can, I just find that, um, I just find that. It just feels like I was designed to live this life. It feels like if I was, you know, if we say that there's a, that there's a system being made for a creator as to how to live your life, this definitely feels like it because it really, um, I really feel, I really feel freed since since I found this way. I feel like I was living my life in the wrong way before, and I didn't know it at the time until I actually found Islam. And then once I started to practice this, then I realised now I can realise and I can look back at my my life before and I can just see so many improvements. Um, I can just see so many. So 
just, just life has just got better and better and better ever since I became Muslim. I don't think I'd have a child by now uh, if I hadn't have become Muslim because obviously this is something which is uh, so highly recommended by the Prophet that that's really what kind of motivated uh, and I think just in the community that's what makes it so normal for, for uh, young people to get married. So Alhamdulillah, um, now since becoming Muslim obviously I've got married and had now had little Yusuf has joined us. Um, and I think, you know, um, inshallah, his upbringing is going to be completely different to uh, anything I would have thought before I became Muslim because now, you know, everything's focused towards, uh, you know, the tarbiyat, you know, the raising of the child in the Islamic way. Um, so trying to set examples of, um, you know, praying together and trying to think how we're going to get him the best education, um, you know, the environment that he's going to grow, grow up in, I mean, everything, like what school he goes to, um, you know, what who his friends are going to be. This is all, this is all kind of... Uh, shaped really. Um, this is all shaped now by, by Islam, so that's a big change for me. Um, it's probably not something I would have thought, you know, going back a few years, uh, that would have been the case. And he's just woken up now to join us. <laughs> Carry on. Whoa. So. He finds his fingers and again. Yeah, yeah. We chose his name, uh, he's, so obviously his name is Yusuf. How we picked that name was we um, gave Chris's parents um, a list of five names that we liked that were the same or had a uh, value, uh, holy value in Christianity and Islam. So we had like Zakaria, Ibrahim, um, what else did we have, Isa, things like this. And out of those names, they picked Yusuf because it was important that the name they felt comfortable with and they could pronounce. Oh, very, um, yeah, yeah. But they could be able to pronounce yeah, the name as well, like, which is important. Like Karsim, for example, but they couldn't pronounce Karsim. Um, so, and then we kept Hassan in the middle because we wanted hey. to name and not call my father Hassan. So, hey. Hassan Mortimer. Hey. Oh, sorry, I should just put the dummy. It's stuck in my finger. And just to finish actually, if you think about, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had no reason to create us at all, you know, um, it doesn't, doesn't improve Allah, you know, Allah does not benefit from our, from our creation and Allah does not benefit from putting rules on us, it doesn't, it's not like a, a person who gains a sense of power on putting rules on people, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave these rules as a mercy um, and Allah created us out of a mercy and gave us a perfect way to live as a mercy and this is since since taking on Islam as my religion this is really um, I've become more and more convinced of this with with every day really